everyone. My name is Ashraf Mahboub. And today I am going to present Orion and the three rights. Right sizing, bundling, and right free warming for serverless DAX. So that's a pretty fancy title. Let's break it down. Uh, this work is a collaboration between Purdue, Carnegie Mellon, and Microsoft Research. So serverless computing is an attractive model. It allows users to focus on writing the code for their applications while the platform takes care of the deployment and the execution of the function. OK, uh, let's start over. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Ashraf Mahagoub, and today I'm going to present Orion and the three rights. Right sizing, bundling, and right pre-warming for serverless DAGs. This work is a collaboration between Purdue, Carnegie Mellon, and Microsoft Research. So serverless computing is an attractive model. It allows users to focus on writing the code of their functions, while the platform takes care of the function deployment and execution. It also comes with a very nice pricing model called the pay-as-you-go model, in which users pay for the exact amount of resources their functions consume, and they don't also pay for any idle times. And one example of a serverless function that we use in our evaluation is the classify function. Classify function simply takes an input frame and produces the object classification uh, results for uh, that frame. And a nice feature in serverless computing is that I can compose two or more functions together in, in a chain and to achieve a more interesting task. So for example, here I'm showing an example of a chain of two functions. The first is called the extract function that takes a video chunk, extracts a representative frame from that chunk, and then passes it to the classify function for object detection. And the output one function becomes the input to the next. And more interestingly, I can leverage high scalability of serverless computing, and I can even compose my functions in the form of a DAG. So here we added this function called split that takes a longer video and splits it into uh, 30 chunks. And now for every chunk of these 30, I can do extract and classify in parallel. And here we are interested in the DAG's latency, which is the time that is elapsed between the start and the exit states after all functions finish execution. Now the first observation we make about current commercial serverless platforms is that although they allow users to compose their applications from multiple uh, functions, they still execute each function on the DAG in a separate VM. So for this particular example, we will need 61 VMs to execute the DAG. And it is still the user's responsibility to select the VM size for each function in the DAG, which impacts the DAG's latency and the execution cost. Additionally, if any function in the DAG experiences a cold start, there will be an additional initialization time for this particular function, and that also increases the DAG's latency. All right, so now we have introduced the serverless DAG. What do you want to do with that DAG? What we want to do is to optimize the DAG execution time and the cost. And in order to do this, we have three tasks. The first is to automate the VM selection process. We also want to optimize the fan out nodes in, uh, with uh, parallel invocations. And we also want to reduce uh, cold starts during DAG execution. However, this is a challenging, as we will see from our workload characterization that we did on uh, Azure Durable Functions. And uh, from our data set, we collected real workload traces for DAG-based applications over a duration of a week. Uh, the data is collected from six different data centers worldwide. And in this data set, we notice that there's a high rate of daily invocations in terms of tens of millions of invocations per day. And that number has grown six times over the past 2.5 years, showing that the serverless DAGs are becoming more and more popular over time. We uh, make three important observations from the workload characterization. The first is, even for the same DAG, we see a high variance in the execution time. So here, I'm showing the top five most frequent uh, DAGs in the data set and the cor their corresponding runtime on the uh, y-axis on a log scale. And as you can see, even for the same DAG, there's a high variance. Specifically, the P95 latency is 80 times the P25 latency averaged over the five DAGs. Accordingly, there's a high performance variance across invocations of the same application, and we need to mitigate that variance when we perform the optimization. 
Uh, the second uh, observation we make is that there is a high skew among the parallel invocations. And here we define the skew as the ratio between the latency of the slowest invocation to that of the fastest invocation within the same stage. And here we show two different distributions. One for the exit that has a, l a low width or a low fan out between 2 and 64. And another one with uh, wide DAGs that have width more than 64. And as you can see, 50% of the DAGs have a skew of two times or more. And increasing the fan out also increases the skew. Accordingly, we will have to handle this high competition skew in order to perform our optimization. And third, when we study the cold starts, we notice that there is a, a big impact of the DAG invocation frequency on cold starts. So here we show uh, the invocations per day on the primary y-axis and the corresponding percentages of cold starts on the secondary y-axis. And as you can see that this uh, graph with respect to the DAG invocation frequency that follows a zip distribution, with the lower invocation frequency, there is more and more uh, cold starts. Uh, and specifically, 80% of the DAGs have an invocation frequency of less than 100 times per day. And those experience a high percentage of cold starts. Now, we have identified three major challenges from the workload characterization. High performance variance, computation skew, and cold starts. And now we are going to uh, show how our solution addresses these uh, challenges. The first step of our solution is to model the latency as a distribution. So here I'm showing four different CDFs for the same function parameter tune. And uh, the four CDFs are with respect to different VM sizes. And I'm showing the latency on the primary y-axis and the corresponding CDF on the uh, uh, latency on the x-axis and the CDF on the y-axis. And as you can see, increasing the VM size reduces the latency, so the distribution gets shifted uh, to a lower uh, latency. However, even if I assign the maximum VM size in AWS Lambda, that is 10 gigabytes, I still see a big gap between the minimum and the maximum uh, latency uh, of, of uh, the invocations in that uh, particular function. Accordingly, I need a distribution and a collision-aware performance model to be able to select the right VM size for this function. Assuming that now I have a distribution that uh, measures or models the latency of each function, what I want to do is to combine these distributions together so that I have the end-to-end -end latency distribution. And the way we do this is that whenever we have a two functions in series, we apply a convolution operation to combine or add their distributions together. And whenever I have a parallel stage of n invocations, I need to apply a max operation in order to combine their distributions together. And notice here that both convolution and max are sensitive to the correlation. So I need to consider the correlation between n-series functions when I perform convolution. And I also need to consider the correlation in, among n parallel invocations when I perform max. And with this end-to-end -end performance model, what I can do is that I can now search the space of different VM sizes and select the right VM size for each function so that I meet a latency uh, target that is specified by the user. Now, the second challenge is uh, how to mitigate execution skew. And the big, biggest, me uh, the major cause of execution skew is the input dependency. So here I'm showing two uh, invocations of the classify function. One of them is lucky and gets a frame that has very few objects and hence its execution time is short. But the classify to uh, invocation gets a frame that has many objects and then has a longer execution time. And that classify tool becomes the struggler and it dominates the latency of the stage. And you can, you can imagine that if I have more and more parallel invocations, there's a higher probability that one of them will struggle and dominate the latency of that particular stage. What we propose to mitigate that execution skew is a technique that we call bundling. And to understand bundling, I'm showing this simple example where I have four instances of the classify function. And they take different execution times based on the input. And if I execute them on separate VMs, the one that will have the struggler, it will dominate the latency. However, if I bundle them together in one VM, now the strugglers get access to more resources after the, short, uh, the fast workers finish execution. And now the stages latency decreases. The remaining question that our performance model answers is that in a DAG, which stages should we apply bundling to? And also, what is the right bundle size? With respect to cold starts, we uh, propose pre-warming. And uh, the current state of practice is that 
whenever a function does not have a warm VM, the cloud provider will initialize a VM for that function. And then the user will see an additional latency that is the initialization time for this particular function. We can be greedy and initialize the function very early at the very beginning of the execution, but this will not uh, help with the decreasing the utilization because it adds idle time on the provider side. The technique that we propose is to select a delay, the right duration for the delay allows us to decrease the latency without decreasing the utilization. The summary of the contribution so far is that we build a distribution and the correlation aware performance model. We can use this model to select the right VM size for each function in the DAG. We can bundle invocations together to mitigate the, their execution skew. And finally, we can select the right value for the delay so that we can pre-warm the VMs without adding idle time. And now moving to evaluation, uh, we perform our evaluation on AWS Lambda and use AWS step functions to orchestrate the functions in the DAG. We focus on three important metrics, P95 DAG latency and the execution cost in dollar. Those are important for the user. And also the resource utilization, which is important for the provider. And the first comparison we show here is how Orion performs with respect to the original DAG. And for the original DAG, we have two settings. One we, where we assign the minimum VM sizes for all the functions so that we achieve the minimum cost. This is what we call min cost. And another one where we assign the maximum VM size so that we minimize the latency of that DAG. And this is what we call minimum latency. And on the primary y-axis, I show the P95 latency while on the secondary y-axis, I show the price. And as you can see, Orion minimizes the latency and achieves 60% lower latency compared to minimum cost. It also achieves 73% lower, per, lower dollar cost compared to minimum latency. Next, we compare to three baselines. First is called best homogeneous, which assigns at the same VM size for all stages, so it has smaller search space and it gradually increases the VM size until the latency target is met. The second baseline is called the speculative execution, and it's a well-known technique that mitigates execution skew uh, by simply waiting for a user-defined threshold. And if a function passes that threshold, another backup or a secondary instance of the function is executed on a different virtual machine. And finally, we compare to Bayesian optimization techniques that are black box optimization and they are distribution agnostic. First, uh, we consider the best homogeneous, and best homogeneous assigns the same VM for all functions, and hence it can achieve low latency, but it comes with a high uh, dollar cost for the DAG. Speculative execution can mitigate the computation skew to some extent. However, it sometimes unnecessarily run, executes backup invocations uh, as soon as they pass the threshold, and also comes with a high uh, execution cost. Cherry big, since it's distribution agnostic, it assigns large VM sizes so that they meet the, 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 to meet the latency target on median, and also increases the cost. Now, considering two different variants of Orion, one that does not perform bundling, and since it, it becomes sensitive to skew, that it suffers with respect to latency, but combining right sizing with right bundling with Orion full, we achieve better performance per cost over all these lines. Here we evaluate uh, our pre-warming strategy uh, separately. So, and we introduce two variants of Orion. One that is called Orion Cold Star that does not perform any uh, pre-warming. Hence, it achieves high utilization. However, its latency is also high. Uh, we can be greedy and uh, initialize all the VMs from the very beginning. That is Orion Zero Delay. And that helps with the latency, but also decreases utilization. And if we pick the right value for the delay, we notice that Orion full achieves similar latency to zero delay without a, uh, decreasing utilization. Uh, additional notes, we have additional evaluation in the paper, so please go ahead and read it. Uh, in that evaluation, we compare, uh, we uh, evaluate Orion on other platforms. We also evaluate with respect to other applications, such as a machine learning pipeline and a chatbot NLP. And uh, uh, data summaries are now available while the re real traces uh, are being released soon. Uh, the Orion's code and the evaluation apps are publicly available as well. In conclusion, we characterize serverless DAGs in Azure durable functions. From the characterization, we see that DAG execution time varies significantly across invocations. And low invocation frequency increases the chances of cold starts. 
to model the latency, to model the latency for several DAGs, we need to build a performance model for each function, consider the correlation between in series and in parallel invocations, and apply a sequence of convolution max operations to measure the end-to-end -end latency distribution. Finally, with this performance model, I can select the right VM size, I can bundle functions together to mitigate execution skew, and I can select the right delays to uh, mitigate cold starts without adding idle uh, time to the cloud provider. Thank you so much, and be happy to answer any questions.